Hey everybody, good morning. It's Adam Z here from Learn Art Viz. And I've got another exciting new release for you. This time it's Chaos Vantage 2.2. So big update this time. In the past, I've already done a lot of Chaos Vantage videos. And as I've said, I love Vantage and I integrated it into my workflow right away when I first saw it because there is a great value to real-time feedback on photorealistic renderings. But there's always been that comment. Oh, it doesn't have this one feature? This is a waste of my time. I always get that. And it's always the same feature they're talking about. But this time, with this release, they've finally added that feature. Maybe you know what it is. And they've added a couple other things too that I think are really awesome to have in real time. Certain things need to be done in real time. Some of these new features that they've just added, real time things, for sure. So let's check out how they work, see how easy it is to use. And I think you'll see what I mean, that having this in real time is gonna be awesome and way better than just trying to blindly get your settings right and render previews all the time. Okay, so let's get into it right away. Okay, as you can see here, I've already got some things set up and ready to test out for our new feature, which you probably figured out is displacement. This has been the most asked for feature. And of course, Chaos is great at responding to requests and they finally added it. And it works, it's awesome. Let's check it out. First thing I did to get it to work is make a cool displacement texture. To do that, I went to textures.com which I love. Side note, let me know in the comments where you get your high-end 3D textures from. I'd love to hear it. There's Sometimes there's websites I just don't know about. And I went to Stone or something. I don't remember which one I got. Yeah, I got something in here. These are great displacement. So let's say it's this one. Go to this. Very nice. Here are the maps down here. And actually, I was able to just use the free ones because right there, there's a nice displacement map and it isn't super high res, 1024 by 1024, fine, but that's all I need. But I got these maps right here. Okay, but once you've got all your maps, then you just need to make your material. This is how I set mine up. There's my material. The way I did this is I set up a composite map for my diffuse and here is my diffuse map, that guy. And then I used a multiply of my ambient occlusion map on top of it. This guy, just multiplying that on top of the diffuse. And you can turn it up and down this way, so like 50. Now it's a lot less. Maybe 70 is the right place to be. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, the roughness is obvious. Put it in the roughness slot. But if it's a roughness map, make sure that in V-Ray you're using roughness instead of glossiness, right? So down here you change it to roughness. These are the inverse of each other. This is a roughness map, so we want it set to roughness. Then in the displacement map, I usually place the displacement map in here. That's what it looks like. But I turn it off because I don't want displacement being done in the material. I'm gonna be doing it with a modifier. Then I think I'm gonna add the bump too, the normal bump, because that'll add a little bit more detail even. Okay, with that all set up, all the maps in place, this is what it's looking like. Pretty cool. But I wanna add some depth to this using the displacement modifier, which we can now do in real time. So all we have to do is set this up with our UVW mapping and then put the modifier on top. Everything default, 3D mapping, and then I just dragged my texture from my material, make sure the mapping matches everything else and you can just drag it straight in like so that's the displacement map and then we will just start adjusting the settings to see how it looks in vantage start our live link okay with vantage started we can start to look at our displacement going on here there it is let's turn down the exposure in vantage here and look at our displacement you can see that on this sphere, it's looking quite nice. You can tell that my 
textures are a little bit low resolution but it's still showing the effect of the displacement quite nicely you can see the ambient occlusion going on you can even see possibly some of that normal map I mean this looks really good until you get right in here at the edges but I mean from here this looks amazing now the reason this is really nice to have in real time is because now we can dial in exactly how we want it to look without having to re-render a bunch of times and remember this is all just kind of the default displacement going on here 3d mapping add a map with the proper UVW is going on and then just set the amount so we can say 10 inches and we should see some serious displacement going on and of course when we displace too much we see stretching going on of the materials the textures no getting around that but I love the way the lighting looks on this displaced material and here as well super easy to use the one other thing I found is that we want to keep continuity on. If you've used displacement before, you know about this stuff already. But if you don't have it on, you can get gaps happening in the edges as your materials go around the edges of your boxes, for example. You can shift the whole thing as well. So it all tightens in, negative 5 or 5 inches out. So it balloons out. You can see on the edges it gets a little weird in this case okay so if you've used displacement a lot in the past you know that it gets super annoying to try and dial these settings in just right if you're not looking at things in real time so yeah i think this is a big deal yes it is true that you could do this with interactive rendering already but i just find vantage performance to be so much better and the feedback to be so much faster Okay, now let's try out the second big feature, which I think is essential to do in real time because getting the settings just right is like impossible if you don't have real time feedback. And that is the V-Ray Fur. Okay, wait, before we get into the V-Ray Fur, which I think you're gonna really see the value of having that advantage. But before we do that, I'd like to humbly remind you to please subscribe to my channel. I recently reached 50,000 subscribers and that's a big deal for me. So much thanks to all of you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so if you feel like I share valuable information in this video and on my channel in general. Thank you. Okay, to get the fur going, all we need to do is create a simple rectangle with a UVW map on it. That's just a one-to-one. -one. And then let's just go to create V-Ray, V-Ray fur, and boom, automatically creates a V-Ray fur object on a rectangle for us. And then, as I have said, adjusting it is going to be so much easier than trying to get these settings right without real-time feedback. So for example, we can just say, let's make the length much bigger. Okay, I don't like the way that looks. Let's reset it. The thickness. Let's go down here. You just dial up the thickness like this. And trust me, trying to do this without real-time feedback totally sucks. Because, like, do one setting, render. Ah, that doesn't look right. Let's adjust it a little bit, render. That doesn't look right. Let's turn that thickness down. And it's like, instead of having to know what all these things is going to do, you just try it and be like, oh, that I don't like the way that looks. It's like designing in 3D. It's cool. Okay, we can up the density here per area. 0.4, 1. V-Ray Fur can be pretty heavy, but it's working nicely. Getting super dense in there. Great. So we can adjust that. We can also come in and do... I mean, we can change the variation of any of these things. Say, like, direction to make it more crazy. The length variable we can set to... Or variation we can set to 0.3. Thickness variation. All our variations we can do. And, again, we can see it all instantly really really nice to be able to do that i set up a simple let's see where i find it here's a map here's a grunge map okay let's apply this to our fur and see what kind of thing we can get so if we just take this map drag it out into here let's say we put it on the curl map and just instance it to here see what happens to our rug turn it on and off not much happening there because it's the curl map Put it on density, let's see what happens. 
Okay, so that does change our density quite a bit. Put it on our bend map. Okay, now we're seeing some major changes for that. I think what I might want to do is, okay, yeah, you can see that map coming through our rug. Very nice. I think I want it on the length map. Yeah, that's basically working. And then I want the, let's say on this one, I want the thickness less, a little less gravity going on. And then on this map, let's say, let's say we adjust it so there's no absolute zero on it. So you don't want any parts where there's no rug, right? There you go, there's our carpet going on. Pretty intense, actually. Okay, so you can see, I, I hope you can see how annoying that would have been to try and get it to look right without real-time feedback. You would have to know exactly what ex every single setting is going to do in your head or else it's gonna take you forever to just tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. So with displacement and with V-Ray Fur, those are two things where getting the settings just right is kind of hard and having real-time feedback is gonna be fantastic. So hopefully from this video, you can see the value of that. And that's why Vantage is a cool program because you can do this in a totally photorealistic scene and get visual feedback instantly. And that is simply the best way to get it looking right. And this takes us above and beyond what we've had with real-time feedback before, because now we can turn this into an animation, easily move our cameras around, and Vantage gives us excellent performance and a slick UI to do it all with. Okay, enough about that. Hopefully you've seen already that these new features are great. Let's take a look at just the other things they added briefly so we can wrap up this video. Okay, on the Chaos page, let's just look at the release notes for the Vantage 2.2. These are the big things. Support for V-Ray Fur, Ornatrix, Hair Form, and X-Gen Hair. Okay, we looked at the V-Ray Fur, and we looked at V-Ray Displacement. This is a big deal, too, if you're a Forest Pack and Rail Clone user. This needs to be supported for Vantage to be a viable option for real time, because we got to be able to see our Forest Pack stuff. V-Ray Hair Next Material. This is pretty cool. Add Advantage Live Link Settings Dialog in 3ds Max Vantage Toolbar. Implemented a Firefly filter. This is good. Fireflies can be an issue. You're rendering with real time. And then they did modifications. These are the new features. These are the modifications. So some big things. To me, the big thing is DLSS. Improved DLSS. Added 2.25 and three times upscale modes reduced memory usage. So the DLSS was a big feature they added in previous previous versions. They continue to improve it, which is fantastic. They've changed the way scene states work a little bit, and it will tell you when you change a scene state, it'll remind you like, hey, you changed something about the scene state, save a new one. Helps you keep track of it a little bit better. Okay, so those are the things that stick out to me. The biggest things being the addition of displacement and V-Ray Fur, but also just a general improvement of the software. The rest of the things to me are just little improvements, small steps. The adding of the fur and the displacement is the big deal to me, but I also love that they just continue to make, to dial in the software and make it better and better. Okay, hopefully this is useful to you guys. That's Chaos Vantage 2.2. As per usual, I appreciate very much you watching this video. Thank you. I hope it was informational for you. I hope it helps you figure out which software you want to be using, which workflows you want to be using, and how to use them. Again, if you find this information useful, please consider subscribing. And if you need to learn more in depth about any of the software that I specialize in and use, then please check out the links below for in-depth courses. They're usually starting around just $10, which is an insane deal because it's tons of hours of content. And we've got whatever you need. You've got V-Ray, 3DS Max, Unreal Engine 5, and four various different skill levels. So check that out. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.